Hello everyone, in this video I am going to go through how to use Quackle and I'm going to use one of my example games. Uh, I'm also going to show you where you can get this amazing free software and it's one of the uh, it's probably the best one of the, the, the there's a couple of uh, analysis pieces of analysis software around on the internet and uh, this is by far one of the most widely widely used I think it's also probably the most flexible and I think if you can get your head around it and use it in your games you will definitely improve I use it specifically to go through games that I've lost to see if there was anything I could do uh, I do know other players who use it uh, quite exclusively very um, like on every game to analyze uh, and it can be useful then um, it's not just an analysis tool but it is a computer program you can play and it will beat you a lot so uh, I might go through a, a, an example game at one stage but in this video I'm just going to go through um, basically the downloading bit the uh, and a sam and like a sample test game all right, so let's get started. Uh, so the uh, name of the program is Quackle. Put that in. <clears throat> you should get um, the, the first link that comes up, I'm not sure, depending on how your Googles is. Uh, Quackle.org, we're gonna click that. And uh, as you can see, Quackle version 1.0 released. And uh, it talks about, okay, so it, it's available, so 1.01, .01, download the uh, most recent one. Uh, so if you have Windows, you can click this link, 1.01, .01, and uh, that'll download. If you're a uh, Mac OS, if, if you're an OS Mac user, you can also download theirs. Um, and it explains some technical information. Now, if you're just new to Quackle, I'd look, I don't even know what this is. All I know is that Quackle is free and if you want, you can improve it. Um, so there's a cool little um, picture on the front and if you're wondering what that means, um, it's a reference to the um, World Scrabble Champion. So Hatinado is correct, Unbeavered, yeah. Uh, dog foods, etc. Trilby. Now it refers to um, the world champion Wellington Jiggera, who won the uh, world championship in Perth. And um, OGL, not a word, but it's the um, I guess it's the software that uh, the the programmers use. And um, yeah, so uh, let's just go ahead. Uh, so you quick click this link, you download. Um, and yeah, so that'll take a few minutes. When it's open, down just just do a normal install. I'm gonna trust that you can just go through, press the OK buttons, things, install it, and then uh, you should be able to open it. Um, I've got it on my desktop, so I'm just gonna open it straight there. When you do open it, um, if there's anything very different, do let me know, and I will try to address it. Right, so um, you've got. Uh, options here new game open and generate word list the generate word list works just like Zizavar if you're familiar with Zizavar and you should be if you're doing Quackle so I can just put in uh, like Hattonator and it'll tell me all the words come out of Hattonator um, and if you're American you can remove the British words there I'm trying to think I think uh, I think uh, if I do that Oh, but I'd have to do the query again? No, I don't know. Alright, stop it. Yeah. It's not telling me. Um, <clears throat> oh, I see, I've told it to keep British. Anyway, um, that tells you what that one's about. Uh, these ones you'll notice you can't really do anything here, and that's because they're. Um, we haven't started a game yet. I'm just going to go ahead and maximize that so you can see and hopefully you can see. So settings, configure quackle, interface, uh, octothorpe, British words. So what this means, it puts a little hashtag um, next to words that appear when you're playing your games. 
show bonus squares, blah, 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 blah. Um, I th think there was at some stage one way to um, settings. Yeah, so these settings here are slightly different. Board, standard, so you can add a new board and you can actually set it up yourself. So it's actually pretty cool. You can design your own board. Um, so like you can put like three letter word scores there, two letter word scores, triples, etc. You can do all of this. You can you can set it to seven by fifteen if you wanted to, you know. Yeah, play on half the board and then you can name it. So it's pretty cool. Um and I think they I think at one stage you had to do it yourself for legal reasons. But you know, you can just go through that, play have a play around, modern play and traditional. I not really used any of these so let's um let's have a quick look at what these are lexicon it's got a lot of lexicons and that's amazing um tdrl 98 tdrl 06 all of the ones uh that we're legally allowed to use so they yeah that's very good uh, ods5 which is the french there's norwegian there's korean um not sure how the korean one works but uh, hey um, so make sure the settings are uh, set so you can't really play in Korean unless you've got it set to Korean you can't really play in Greek unless you've got it set to Greek I believe so uh, this will tell you your bags your distributions etc and what comes out so um, yeah ha have an experiment with that I might actually well, I've got it set to modern what if I set it to plain and I start a new game I'm just gonna do that for mmm okay Plain, traditional, okay, I might use that. Traditional and there's modern. I, yeah, you use what you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with uh, traditional. Now it's, you, you'll notice that when I hit yes, um, it came up, when I hit uh, new game, <clears throat> it came up with uh, some choices. So let's go back there. Let's start a new game. All right, so, um, this gives you the number of players that you can have, so I can add a new player here if for some reason I want to play um, normal Scrabble. Uh, remove that one. So it can you can tell that you want to play, if you want to play the computer, you can select to play the computer here. Computer will just go ahead and, and play. Um, so I'm just going to, if you set human with unknown racks, um, I don't think it asks you for basically for their racks. So I, I just set it to human. You know what, let's let's use the human with unknown racks because uh, uh, I believe that's how we can do it. Now, for this game that I'm going to go through with you, it was in the most recent tournament. It was the only game that I lost um, and I probably should not have lost it in two, in, in two areas. So we're just gonna go through there and we'll see what mistakes I made. Um, I lost it by 15, was it 15 points? Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to set my um, player name. I always put myself there. Uh, the player was Tim Mason. Okay. All right, so here, um, if it was human, it would, it would disagree with whatever's one was in there. Now I know he had out lie and what I can do is because okay so I've selected that so that it it randomizes who goes first it just on a 50 50 so uh, if I were to put new game it would put me back as first if I put um, new game again it would put Tim back as first and yeah that makes sense um, right so I'm gonna select um, I know he had this rack and, he sh and so I'll do a generate choices. Um, Quackle then uh, comes up with a few valuations. It's early in the game, so we don't really do anything there. Um, things that you might notice on this thing, simulation four. I'll go through this in a, in a little bit. Um, uh, different things. So my opponent actually played this word. Oh, why? And so um, it's a wrong word, um, and uh, we say so. Crackle comes up and says, "Oh, this this is not correct. Are you sure?" And you go, "Yes." And if committed, should Outlay be a cha be challenged at the board? And the word is yes. 
So you'll see that I've put in a new thing and it's come off and said, oh, um, challenge dot. Now, if I wanted to do, so, if I was playing, say, a five point challenge and it was a correct word, let's, uh, no, but let's uh, add five points. Yes, no. Um, so let's say it was right and I challenged, then it, it thinks these, these are a little better. Um, so my opponent played played a wrong move and he did get challenged off, so I'm going to commit his move and then it's my turn. Uh, now this doesn't work unless you write your racks down. <laughs> uh, you can write the words but the best way to do it is to actually write, write your racks down and if there's significant interest I'll publish my my own score sheets online. I do have quite a few. Uh, I've been using one with the same style for about at least five years and it's worked for me. Um, it allows me to tile track, allows me to write my racks down with security and then be able to review them later so we can go through them. Okay, so uh, my rack on this on this first turn was this. At any time, feel free to um, pause the video, think about what you do in the rack. All I'm just going to do, I'll type in the rack, I'll press generate choices and I'll see what Quackle thinks. So generate choices in this way, yeah, it kind of thinks, oh, Jow's all right. Now, the way that Quackle ranks your plays is it looks at the uh, score and it looks at what's left and it makes a decision. So it doesn't like RRW and it doesn't, well, so if we look at it, it goes score, valuation. So the valuation of IRRR is negative nine, score 22, valuation 15.9. Uh, so the valuation of RRW is negative 6.1. So it's slightly higher than this. Now, this is the initial, um, these are your initial states. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to reduce the simulation to two ply. And I'll just explain what that is, and I'll explain why. Uh, so, because <clears throat> I'm going to do a simulation. In fact, I'm going to do it while we're doing that. So simulate is up here, where my marker is. Next, ask championship player. I don't do that, but uh, this will just think about it, I believe. So I just like simulate, and I'm going to talk about um, how, it, how it works. So it looks at your score. It looks at, so the initial one will look at your score. It'll look at the valuation, and then it'll give you a valuation like this. What I'm doing now with simming, it comes up with imaginary racks. It chooses the best score valuation it can think of and plays and then comes up with a uh, win percentage based upon that, or an uh, adjusted valuation. So for example, uh, let's just let's just pause it because it does draw a few things. So let's, let's compare the same move. Um, okay, so how, how do I use this? So I've simulated it a bit and I've gone, uh, yeah, I don't like Jow. Uh, so what was my actual play? My actual play, I believe, was just was probably Roji here. Uh, no, I'm, it, it appears that it was Roji here. So I put in Roji, and it highlights it. Doesn't highlight it very much, but it highlights it there. So it's it's currently ranked um, fourth out of these ones. So let's go ahead and simulate a little bit. What I'm doing with two ply. So what's two ply? Um, so it goes, well, you make a move, which is Roji, and then your opponent makes a random move, and then your opponent, then you make another move, and then your opponent makes another move. Uh, so a move that's like this, which I would never do because it leaves this open, it doesn't think it's that much worse. 0.5, I reckon, now this is my personal opinion, is that anything within a point of valuation is uh, legitimate other move. At this stage it reckons I should have played it here. It doesn't like me playing Roji 
over here where I played it. Um, so I'm just going to pause. Now the thing is, I told the computer just give me a move. I didn't tell the computer that I knew what my opponent's rack was, which I do. So that can change things. So take this as a snapshot, have a, have a look at the top six moves. Um, the top between my move and the other move. These were these would be the two I would choose. Now the reason I didn't like this one is because the S, just because of the S, it's just really easy to put the S. Um, so what you do then, you... I'm just going to, so yeah, this is where you snapshot because I'm going to remove them and I'm going to specify a partial opponent rack. Now I know my opponent played this, so now I can generate choices. You'll see that it's the same valuation, blah, 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 blah. Simulate. Now what I'm hoping is that I get a different result. Oh, I see what's happened. Right. Okay. Um, you actually have to, it looks like you have to go, you have to like the clear the simulations. Now I'm pretty sure, there you go. Clear simulation results. Simulation. Simulation, so simulation details. So it tells you um, how sure it is of certain words. Okay. Um, and and so you can you can see what how it's looking at win percentages etc. Um, so I'm just going to quickly pause. So it reckons the bingo percentage I guess for my next turn is 16%. And at 16, it's fairly consistent wherever I play. Um, so that, that you can go through those details. Standard deviations mean um, if you're not familiar with statistics, this is like I'll, I'll tell you for a start. You don't need it to like eight decimal places. Um, you, you need it to <laughs> standard deviation in this case one one decimal place is enough. Uh, bingos again the decimal places yeah. Just take it on raw figures. Okay, so let's keep simulating. Okay, it's chosen quite a few moves. So you'll notice that the uh, it's pretty much the same types of moves but it's slightly higher for certain ones so it still likes this particular move but I believe it now oh it actually likes this move because it knows what my opponents got um, now if we, if we keep doing that we might see that it gets within a point and it doesn't really matter my move my chosen move here it just doesn't like at all it's in fact saying that the to put the S S hook here is actually superior and as it turns out a funny thing as it turns out it would have actually worked for me had it done that um, all right so my actual play so now now that I um, I've had a look at how could I have improved my move and it, it's saying you should have opened up because you knew what your opponent's rack was you should have opened up the S so it's a funny thing that but uh, we'll go with that. Actually, I might just use this opportunity just to show you the difference between four ply. So I'm going to keep that. I'm going to clear. You need the clear simulation results because you can't mix simulations. It doesn't. It doesn't give meaningful information uh, unless you're a statistician and can do all the maths yourself. So let's just simulate the only these five moves six moves uh, now you'll notice for a start the, the the numbers seem to jump around more and that's because we're actually looking at further and further so when I talked about two plies before it was uh, my turn then their turn then my turn then their turn so a ply being one player plays the other player plays four ply is my turn, their turn, my turn, their turn, my turn, their turn, my turn, their turn. Now, when you, if you're familiar with Scrabble, you would know that it's possible to have played four bonuses in those four turns. So those are some of the things that it's thinking. It's going, oh, how many? But it's only done a thousand iterations. There are possible, I'm not sure of what the exact maths were. I might 
do another video where we go through the exact uh, maths, but you would find that, uh, so it would be like a hundred, a, a million, million, million different combinations, and it's only going through this tiny amount. All right, so I think we've done enough iterations. So it likes playing there still. It still likes playing there. But my little move has gone up a little bit. Just a little bit. So I'm still behind. As you can see, so specifying the opponent rank, doing the two ply didn't really change much. So I'm going to keep it on two ply for the time. And I'm going to turn the um, opponent rank off. So my actual move was, in fact, this one. So I'm, I may have lost a potential four points in this game. That's that's how some people use it, and that's what people will refer to. If you're ever, if you're ever around other serious Scrabble players, they might refer to it as uh, equity. Um, so my opponent then plays this, Lowry. Oh, so you can uh, choose the um, choose the direction that you're going, and um, it's fairly simple. And then just type type it in if you want. No, no, it doesn't let you. You have to type it in. Okay. Lowry, enter. Uh, now, I can do an enter, or I can do the generate choices and see see where it is. And it's not even on here because it only thinks he's got LD. It thinks he's got an AD. So, Lowry. Uh, now, if you wanted more choices, you can go here, move. So, there's the auto. Uh, generate 50 choices. And on generate 50 choices. Generate all choices. Now, that's a lot of choices. Look. Look, look how you, you can't even count. And why? Well, it's talking about, you know, changing. So there's at least a hundred moves here. Put that in your chess simulator. Um, right, so Lowry. Uh, so generate 50. Mm. Okay, I'm going to commit. Right, my turn. Back to me. And I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, it's a bit annoying. Okay, so... This was my rack. Uh, e A H R R S W. You can think about pause video, think about what you want. And this is what I missed. Now, it's not that I technically missed these. I did not see this one, I can't remember. But I played a wrong word instead. Uh, shh, that's right, I played this. I don't know why. Yes and yes. So it's an unfor it's an unfortunate that it happened, but you know. So it tells you how many points how many points did I lose by not playing. Funnily enough, it's actually really funny, isn't it? It thinks I actually made score by not playing there, rather than playing the worship, which was which was which you'll see was my eventual play. It doesn't like, it doesn't give me a good winning percentage, but it thinks that uh, in the end I actually make more points. So I commit and I go to the next turn. Now I, my opponent has OX. That will teach me for playing wrong words. I still have the same rack. Generate choices. Worship. Uh, 80. Why did I play 80? I, again, another mistake. So I, I made a rash decision. I was I wasn't a hundred percent sure of Worsher at the time, and I was a little annoyed. But uh, it did come back, and I should have played it here. But we'll see. All right, we're done. Right, next move. Think. That says my opponent played W-O. Yes, I believe it was W-O, and they should get... So, on, on the sheet of paper I'm looking at, which unfortunately you guys can't see, W-O, generate for 21. Ah, oh, there, that makes sense. Um, okay, and then I picked blank. So, the blank, you can represent with, w, with a, a question mark, like that. Or you can represent as a, a dot. I, I do it as a um, full stop. Oh, yeah. So 
mm, okay see it won't now it won't let me do do things that don't have uh, that that aren't on the board so I'll just go back to loom there we go um, <clears throat> all right so generate next turn I didn't know this word at the time I instead ended up playing this yeah dolsum so dolsum I didn't see uh, melodian I did see melodian but I didn't like the fact that I put up a triple triple Modelo, Modelo was a, a, a possibly a better choice so was it a better choice well I don't like I'm just gonna remove that and I'm gonna remove that now the reason I remove these is um, because it, it wastes my time by by seeming things I know like are, I, I intuitively know that they're wrong uh, because they score just m that much less than the other than the other play as I said okay so this rates my bloomed as being just a little bit less so it doesn't really matter that I lost a point but there was a point so if I'd known Modelo I would have played it um, so we, we're good with that I'm happy I'm, I'm happy that uh, my my analysis is as good as I'm gonna get it for that move okay uh, n next turn uh, I've got it down as detune so my opponent must have played had that and played this because he got it for 21 yep okay good uh, my next move Zarfs plus ES guess what I'm gonna play Zarfs could have played it there I could have played it there um, some people might be tempted to hang on to the S so let's let's have a look I'm gonna keep these moves Let's keep uh, them up to there. Let's remove them, and let's just have a look how much better or worse. Because um, some people loathe playing this like a Z into the triple line. All right, because your opponent's going to get a little score. It doesn't matter, but it scored so much more than the other one that it was worth it. So um, this is where Quackle can either back up or refute your own responses. Because if you're if you're scoring if you're coming up with different moves to Quackle and failing and and it's it's saying that you've you you've underscored yourself with things then yeah you can then review and then make try and make better decisions in the future so it likes either of these I'm happy to go with the points. Um, and that is what happened in the game. My opponent had this, and they played that for 39. So they had junk. They were able to get rid of some junk really easy. LU, not not the best tiles. Um, okay, so I had generate EF. Yeah. So I, now now this is where it gets hard because in my notes, um, well, what's the best here? In my notes, I've got I've got it that I played EF for 31, but there's actually two places to play it. And uh, if I chose, I'm going to play here, and it gives me the same valuation but a slightly different win percentage. I would go with valuation, which is one. So I'm going to go commit. Uh, my opponent then has a bonus. Did he play the blank then? I think he did. Yeah. Played it for 101, and that's what's on my score sheet. Yep, well done. Uh, gap sets. Okay, this is my rack. So this is what I played as well. So I'm happy that that comes up as the first play. Um, YEA. Uh, where, so my opponent has this. We can think about where, where would they play. Where would my opponent play? Um, looks like here, I reckon. Either or, either or. Commit. Is there any um, reason why they would play YEA rather than YE? It's probably like a point one difference and it's incredibly deep. Uh, there's an incredibly deep analysis that can't be done by humans. Um, but 
it's not worth really arguing about. Like, if there was another Y and you were behind and you could open up YGO, then yes. But other than that, Goa, it, yeah. it would depend on the board. You, can, you can't sort of make a general decision here and then have it extend to the next things. So, oh, yeah. So, um, changed my rack to... Did I just have that? I must have. So this was my rack. And I made a slight error here. Um, let's remove that. Remove that. Now this was... Um, so these ones... Um, yeah, yeah, I made that. So these ones I don't need to look at. They, they don't score enough. I scored 86. Um, I did not play Archist. Uh, and I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure of it, um, but as it turns out, it not necessarily the best play, and that's because it leaves the uh, um, this hot spot. This is always a big hot spot, which can you can your opponent can get. You know, they have an air food. You know, really simple word, nothing to think about, and they get fifty points for it. Um, so it's saying that uh, Archest it would actually be best there by a slight amount. Look, they're all within point one. Point one. What does it matter? I ended. Up, I played Chaster, and my opponent challenged. Now, that would have been great if uh, uh, this was a five-point challenge, um, but it wasn't. So I'm gonna go ahead, commit my move. Um, opponent plays. Has the back good, and they play a good. And um, I then have audit plus this. <sighs> now that was my chosen play. Let's um, do a simulation. Now, what what I love about Quackle is it comes up with these things you might never think of that um, seem amazing. So uh, here, here Rahui, great little balancing leave, gives you this awesome rack here. Um, I would not, I wouldn't have seen that. I was mainly focused on getting rid of as many crappy letters as I could, because that's what they were. Uh, Hucha, and in hindsight, this was probably the best play. And I didn't do it. Um, we're getting towards the end game now. But you'll, we'll, we'll go towards it. So sometimes I will, um, I'll increase the number of, uh, I'll increase the number of uh, plies I do because uh, Quackle also does an end game. It switches from doing this statistical analysis to doing an end game analysis. And when it does end games, it uh, is extremely powerful. Um, right. So Hucha was the best play. I played Audit here. So I potentially lost five points on that. Oh well. Um, my opponent then has these letters and gets gets good synergy on the board. He didn't have anywhere else to play. Uh, I then have a Nightmare Rack that I can't quite remember. So I must have had I can't. I can't quite remember what I had. Uh, it, talks, it thinks I should, maybe should have played there. I ended up playing here for fifteen. I think. Yeah. I actually. I actually didn't write down all my letters. Um, I must have had like an O and an A or something similar. Um, my opponent then has play off some bad letters here. Sixteen. And then I potentially make the game losing mistake. M A B E. Okay, pause the game if you want. Think about what you're going to play. I'm just going to go to generate choices. What I'm going to do is uh, generate 50. I'm going to set it to floor plies, and I'm going to simulate.
And what we're interested in here is the win percentage rather than the valuation. The reason for that is um, that my opponent could bonus because there's, as you'll see over here, unseen tiles, there's quite bonusy looking tiles. They can't bonus here. I can't bonus here. So uh, why, like, I, I, I didn't block. Now, um, why didn't I block? I'm not sure. Or why, why I didn't just play, play it elsewhere. So it thinks this is okay, an okay move. And it thinks uh, it actually likes this move the best, which is really weird. That's that's surprising. That is very surprising. Um, possibly because it left one in. So if I played there, there's two two in the bag, and my opponent thinks. But uh, my opponent ends up having a really. Uh, nice rack. So I ended up playing Vivo here. I'm just going to go ahead and save. So I just saved mine as like 2016. I played here. And my opponent then has. Go away. My opponent then has um, this rack. And they play the bonus. Now if I simulate that. It gives a hundred percent, so I was not impressed. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to my move in a minute. I must have had. Must have had something else. Can't quite remember what I had. Well, it looks like I had six left. Oh. Um, they had an eh. They had ten, so they must have had an IE or N. Where would they play? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Now, this is what I ended up playing. So it, it's good that I, I played the highest word on the board. So it couldn't have been there. It couldn't have been 10. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway. So my opponent then ends up winning Let's just say they did, and they, they end up winning by that much. Did they miss score? No, I must I must be... Uh, no, they played Reb, that's right, they had an E. So, uh, if I go back here... And so I had... Jammed... I am... Leave my opponent with an E, I generate the choice... Simulate... And it tells me I made the best choice by one point, and there were three others that were okay. Commit... And then... My opponent has 10 there, and we're done. Save. So there you go, 15 points difference. Um, now, did I make a mistake here? So, let's simulate what hap would happen if um, if I played here. It reckoned I had a 99% chance to win here. Alright, so uh, let's commit. Uh, then he has... Uh, it's not a word. Is that? And now, uh, and now I have a word that I forgot existed. So I wasn't going to see this. I would not have seen this. I can tell you one thing. So the word is vape. The word here, vape, I actually forgot existed. So I would have played, found... Uh, now I know I was considering this. Now, if I'd seen it... 
So it tells me that I would have won 100% even if I'd done Vine. Uh, well, he would have definitely had the E. And what if he'd picked the V? What did he? What if, what if he'd picked the V? So, uh, so I could have picked the E, the I, or the V because they were in the bag. Um, I know they weren't. I had the V, um, E, I, or N. Hung V. Um, Hmm. I've definitely got two V's. So I have uh, B E V I V. So that's what was in the bag when I played. Now. So let's say if I picked like uh, the I and the N. Generate, simulate, it's it's interesting isn't it? So there's slight chances to win here it reckons, but it, it should really be working out that those lose. What if I would play there? So if I played there, generate choices. There's only one choice he could possibly make, which is there, and it, I would still lose by one. So I would have had to play like the uh, the vape here, which I hadn't seen, uh, and that was a pity. Uh, so yeah, so Quackles taught me something: is to remind myself that the word vape is new. It is a new one. It's only been in for the last six months, but uh, that lost me the game. But as you can see, I made a lot of mistakes in this game. One was here, uh, one was here, one was here. So three mistakes, uh, four. Uh, we're good with that, good with that. Four mistakes, five mistakes, probably six. So five, seven. So. I, I did actually make quite a few mistakes in this game and it ended up costing me the game. Um, and hopefully with Quackle and, and practicing that you do end up getting better uh, and not making the same mistakes next time. Definitely I'll be aware of making cute little setups like this to win a game. That would be awesome. I'd love to do that. Unfortunately I didn't do it this, uh, this move. If I had seen it, wow. Well, that would have been amazing. That would have been, that was an amazing setup, and I missed it. <laughs> so, yeah, it was. I mean, it was great because it ignored the fact that my opponent could bonus. Um, so, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this basic tutorial lesson for Quackle. Um, hopefully, we'll uh, be able to get some more videos. If you've got any questions specifically regarding it, then yes, let us know, and uh, we'll address them at a later date. All right, see you later.